You have to surrender to the process. Uh, once I surrendered to the process, I would get answers right and didn't know why I got them right, but you know what? I knew it, it was in there. You, yeah. you have to really trust in the people you asked to help. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And we have a really, really great story from a really, really great person. So Cindy Myers is here, and the, the really great part of this story is that you uh, have passed the UBE, right? Yes, I have. And it's it been has, a journey. It has been a long, hard road, but I finally did it with your help from Celebration. That's great. Um, I really want to share this story. And just before we came on live, you said, you know, I want to I want to help other people. And I know that that's sort of what your whole life has been about in nursing and in law uh, is helping other people, helping your family. Um, so why don't we start with you just kind of sharing with our audience a little bit of your background and what what led you to be in a place where you wanted to make the move into law and and take the bar exam? Sure. Well, I am the youngest of 11 children, and I grew up in a small, small town uh, in Erath, Louisiana, and my mother always emphasized the hard work and going to school. It was always a big deal for me to go to school and go to college, so I did, and my mom said, hey, be a nurse or be a teacher, you always have a job. So I went into nursing, and I enjoyed that. I worked with neonatal intensive care babies. And then one day, um, I felt that God gave me a calling. And he placed an assignment on my life to go to law school. And uh, after getting my bachelor's degree from nursing, working in nursing, and I decided, okay, I'm going to go to law school. At the time I was married to my husband, Richard, and he looked at me a little sideways for a minute. I bet and he did. Then he said, hey, you know what? I'm ready to start a family. And I said, well, you know what? Being the compromised person that I am, I said, well, let's, let me take the LSAT. And let me go ahead and uh, put my application in and let's try. So we did and we both got both things. So I had my first daughter. Lacey, and I got into law school. So I had to wow. call law school <laughs> and tell them that, hey, um, I need to defer for a year. And the law school was Stetson University College of Law. It's mm -hmm. the same law school that I received my Juris Doctorate from, and they were wonderful. They allowed me to defer for that year, uh, and then after that, I came in as a non-traditional student. I went part-time with my young baby, my husband, and at the time we were in Florida, so the family was in Louisiana. And I made it through law school, I enjoyed it. It was a supportive atmosphere. And after that, my husband had the opportunity to head us back to our home state of Louisiana because you know we, we love Louisiana. It's where all of our family is, we're both close to, to our families. We headed to Louisiana with a new baby, and um, got there, and then I had to face the Louisiana bar exam. Yeah, now let me stop, because some, <laughs> some people in our audience may not know this. There are 49 states in the U.S., and then there's Louisiana. And Louisiana is completely different in every respect when it comes to the law and the bar exam. It's the only state that doesn't offer the multi-state exam. It tests on Napoleonic law, not civil law. Uh, it is completely and utterly crazy. And I say that as someone who lived in Louisiana for many years. So it is a completely different animal, isn't it? It is. I, did, I didn't know what I was up against. Yeah. And having all of my education from Florida, I was not totally equipped to switch over to the codes that Louisiana requires. Yeah. And so when I took the first bar exam, it... I thought I did just fine. <laughs> I had taken the big box bar. I did everything that they told me to do. I, uh, you know, I, I traveled in to sit actually in the rooms, and they didn't have a live professor, but they had a video recording. So I was sitting with all the rest of them. I did all the questions. I did everything they told me to do. 
So I thought, oh, all right, this is just one little step. And the step became a stumble. Mm -hmm. Uh, It became a a stumbling block in my life. Louisiana bar really did a number on me. So uh, I took it multiple times and was not successful. Um, So at that time I decided, me and my husband said, well, you know what, here comes my husband with, he's, he's, he loves family. So it's like, hey, you know what? You have your law degree, you have your nursing degree, you know, just step back for for a minute. I said, well, you know what? Okay. And let's go ahead and have our next daughter. So we had Lacey and then we want to have Lexi. So now we have two children. I head back to nursing because it's, it's a little easier to do with uh, young children. So um, I would work and do like uh, weekends and whatnot and pretty much help grow my family, you know, help my husband with his career and and help my family because we were back in Louisiana so I could help my extended family, like my awesome mother, uh, Joyce, which was up in age at the time, but she's with it, okay? Yeah. So from that point on, I just took a step back and every now and then I would give it a go. Well, let me just take a test. Let me just try. And at some point in time, I told myself I couldn't stay in that position any longer, that I had to do something different. And I did. I quit my nursing job. I cashed in my 401k. And I decided that I was going to switch from Louisiana Bar and try the uniform bar exam. Okay. Now, again, let me just stop so everybody understands. Uh, Louisiana has no reciprocity. It's a different test, as we've already said. And so now the uniform bar exam, which is offered in currently 33 states, but back then a few less than that, uh, was was out there. And it was it is the universal bar exam, uh, or the uniform bar exam, to be more precise. And you decided to sit in which jurisdiction of the UBE? In D.C., in Washington, D.C. Right, right. And but you weren't living in DC at the time. No, I was okay. not living in DC. I was in Louisiana. Okay. And what, I, what I decided to do is, once I had really made the commitment that this is going to happen, one way mm-hmm. or another, this is going to happen. Okay. I actually called Stetson University College of Law and said, "Hey, you know, I hadn't been able to." Um, past you know the bar but I was in Louisiana and I said I need some some isolation time I need I need somewhere to be that is where I can focus because like I said I had the family had the husband had extended family and so I headed back to Florida okay. and I spent time at Stetson and they allowed me to stay at the dormitory so I had you know six to eight weeks where I was focusing on studying for the bar I also had one of the bar coaches there that helped me, uh, and she was tremendously helped for the MBE portion of it, uh, Miss Nina. So while I'm in this dorm room, and me, I'm a, I'm, I'm not a young person anymore, but I'm back in a, in a dorm room thinking, what in the world is happening to my life? Yeah. I came across Celebration. Yeah. And when I came across Celebration, Bar Review, something rang true. Uh, you all really were sent to me from above. No, and I will yeah, say... Yeah, we believe, we believe that too. Yes. And uh, at the time, I didn't, I did not register for you all, but that's where I ended up learning about you all. Mm-hmm. I took the DC Bar... And I passed the MBE, but Mm -hmm. the writing score is what held me up. Mm -hmm. And then I knew, okay, (laughs) celebration, that's what I'm calling. And I did. It was one of the best decisions that I ever made was calling me Jackson. Well, I appreciate that. I want to just, before we pick up on the rest of the story, I want to just point out one thing that you said, which I thought became very important later, and that was that you felt like God had put a calling on your life to do this work. And the reason I want to point that out is that in the face of disappointment and setbacks, 
a lot of people might have said, well, I just give up. I mean, it's just, I, I've got, you had a really good career in nursing. Uh, you're very well esteemed in that field. Um, I know from talking to you you're, that your girls are doing really well. Your family's doing well. You had a lot of things going on. You had a lot of things happening with your, your mom. Uh, there was a lot happening in your life. And it would have been very easy to just say, you know what? Forget it. I, you know, I, I don't need this. But you, and I recall this very distinctly, you said to me, I, I have to do this. I know that God wants me to do this work, and I believe that there's a reason I've been called to this, so I'm going to stay at it. Is that a fair recapture of what you said? That is absolutely right. Okay. And it was pretty much, let's put it this way, it was God, and then also my mother, she taught me better than that. She taught okay. me to never give up. She, right. Right. she has always backed me, so... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of persistence there. And I, and I know that you carried that forward uh, to your daughters in terms of what you expected of them, because we had lots of conversations about modeling and, and, and what you do, uh, uh, modeling behavior, not being a clothes model, but modeling behavior uh, for your, your, your girls so that they would see the importance of never giving up and doing something different. So you reached out to us to sit for the UBE, but now you've relocated, right? And you're, now, you're no longer physically in Louisiana. Correct. My husband had a job offer in Arizona. Yeah. And so after I ended up taking the DC bar, we went ahead and we relocated the whole entire family to Arizona. Okay. So we were here and I had you with me. So yeah. Yeah. Um, even though I was across the country, yeah. Yeah, and one of the nice things about the UBE is that Arizona happens to be a UBE jurisdiction, but it wouldn't have mattered. But you, it didn't matter where you sat for the exam. You, you're taking the same test, and your goal still was to get into the DC bar, correct? Correct. Okay, and the DC bar requires a 266 scaled score. So the first time that you took the exam with us, you came up short of that. Um, and you had already taken the exam, as, as we talked about, and, and done well in the MBE, but not good enough on the writing part. This time, first time through, uh, there's, there's some general balance and improvement, but you're still a few points short. Um, and that's where we had the conversation about, do you give up, do you keep going? And you were very clear that you were going to keep, keep going. And you, um, you, you incorporated into your studies a couple of the tools that we offer, photo reading and the paraliminal recordings. Can you talk a little bit about what those uh, tools were like and how you use them? Yes, photo reading is one of the best tools that I have been able to share in and be able to have in my bag of, of tools now because okay. it allows you to take material, read it, rapidly and then come back and activate that material later to make it your own. The photo reading helped me with my time management tremendously. I I'm somewhat of a perfectionist by nature and so... This is true folks. <laughs> <laughs> so previously I would just go through, go through word by word, on and on, dragging things out, taking it too far and I had to pull back. And photo reading allowed me to do, it helped me to pull back, see what was really important, pull what I needed, and move on. And that is what photo reading did for me. It was tremendous. It helped me save time on the exam. I had time to go back and just make sure that all of my holes were bubbled in, all of my sentences were structured right, and then I sat back like, okay. Yeah. And this is really significant because I was looking back before our call today at some of our notes from our early phone calls. Um, and you probably don't remember this, but um, the very first essay that you wrote me, you told me it took you two and a half hours to write. Um, and it, you get 30 minutes, obviously, on the exam. The first performance test took you two and a half days to write. Um, so, so we had some challenges. This perfection thing was real, okay? This was not just, you know, people say, oh, I want perfection. You really, it was important to you to get it right. And so you were taking it very carefully and very slowly. And so photo reading seemed to unlock in you the, the freedom to really get in and enjoy the material, work with it, begin to own it, and, and not feel so constrained that it had to be precise word for word kind of reading and, and understanding. Is that a is that fair? It is. Photo reading gave me an organic system yeah. where 
I can just pull it down and then give it out. Yeah. I would just use my intuition in the process and then just give the material out. And I feel comfortable with it. And, and I did own the material. Yeah. You went through the whole course and then you also used the paraliminal recordings, which were the audible soundtracks, right, in the left and right ear. Uh, and those were designed to kind of get at certain uh, barriers or blocks, right, that, that you were encountering. So did you use a lot of those? <sighs> Paraliminals are my friend. I still <laughs> use them till today because okay. after being what I would consider a person that was used to succeeding all the time and then having a failure that in my mind made no true sense yeah. because I was doing the work, I was grinding it out. I had to really find a way to let that go, let it all go. And there's one of the paraliminals that talk about letting Called it letting it go. <laughs> yes. Yes. And there were many ones that you said, Hey, take, you would see where my mind was set and you would say, oh, I think you should do this paraliminal. And yeah. it really uh, just allowed me to get in a flow state where I didn't have all this extra baggage that I was holding on to and didn't need to hold on to. Yeah. We had some interesting phone calls. You were in the personal coaching course and we, we did have some calls where... Um, you, <sighs> You know, my reputation is that, that I, I've been known to bring one or two students to tears, not deliberately, but just hard conversations. And we had some hard conversations. There were a lot of struggles for you in this process, weren't there? Definitely. It was just locked. It was all locked inside. My emotions yeah. had yeah. been through a lot. Yeah. And I'm a very caring and loving person. So I take a lot of things what I call to heart. And I had taken it to heart. Yeah. And, you know, you allowed me to say that exam has nothing to do with who you are because you have done a lot. Like, just let me show you what you need to do. Just do it. And and everything turned out great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So so let's talk a little bit about what your mindset was like after the the 255 score. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I still got to get to 266. That's an 11 point jump. That's a pretty big jump to, to hit. You, you've been at this, you know, trying. Um, what did you have to say to yourself? What did you have to do to get yourself? And I can see you closing your eyes and just sort of going back into that moment to get yourself ready to, to climb the mountain again, uh, leading up to the July exams. I told me that my mind that mm -hmm. there's no way that a test is going to stop me from reaching my lifelong dream. And at the time, um, we had some things happen in our family. I had one of my brothers that I love dearly uh, is no longer with us, uh, mm -hmm. Glenn, which uh, he would be very proud that this actually happened for me. Uh, at the time, my mom had gotten uh, sick mm -hmm. and she was with me while I was studying. Yeah. For, I had to decide, you know, what I'm gonna do and you and the program helped me to compartmentalize those things. Yeah. To say, when you're with your family, be with your family. Don't think about anything else. But when you get in your study office, you don't worry about nothing else. You know, believe that everybody is going to be just fine for your two hours till you get back. And I had to believe that. And I and I do believe that. And I believe that it's mm -hmm. going to serve me well in the future when I have to compartmentalize other things. Because yeah. I know the law is not always about always winning. That's you know, right. Sometimes you're going to have some hard fights. And you're going to have to compartmentalize that. And the paraliminals mm -hmm. helped me to do that. Before I would, before I would uh, you know, uh, set my daughter up, set my mom up, make sure they were good, I would come in here and put on my paraliminal. I would do the 10 minute supercharge and it went ahead and it reset me. It mm -hmm. re-energized me. And then I was ready to take in all that information. That's great. And and I know when, when we started working towards the July exams, you were absolutely laser focused. I mean, when you came in, when you went into your study office and I knew what room we were in when we were in the study office and I knew that you were ready, you had done the work, you were ready to hear 
the comments and the feedback and engage in the discussion. And we, we could see, I think both of us could see your work was just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. We've been moving in that direction leading up to February. It just kind of ran out of time. But then we got into July and it was pretty clear to me that you hadn't regressed from one exam to the next. You sort of stayed at the same level, finished, and now you were starting from a higher beginning point. And your work was just getting stronger and stronger. And near the end of our conferences, our, uh, the number of conferences we did, you remember that we talked about the confidence and, and the expectation that you could pass. You remember that? Definitely. When we would do our coaching sessions and I had that structure, F-L-A, I had it down. And at that point, I could, I could actually bring more of my voice into the writing. Mm -hmm. After I had the structure that I knew the bar examiners wanted to see, then I had the ability to kind of throw a little Cindy on top of that. And that is what you helped me to do. And I, those were the skills that I needed. You gave them to me. And after that, it's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Um, and the, the day that I took the exam, my mother was still here. She gave me her cross, she gave me a hug, and I was ready. Yeah, and and so your your mental outlook, you had put in the work, I mean, this was not a, you know, not a just, I walked in and took the exam yeah. one day. You had put in a lot of work, and you had balanced your career, your family, all of the things going on. I mean, there were lots of reasons that you could have and other people might have given up, you didn't. You were gaining confidence, you were gaining momentum, and I felt like as you were going into the exam that you were well positioned. But you're still carrying the burden of not having passed, and that's a burden, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. It weighs on you. Yeah. But, same thing, I got my paraliminals, I would do my photo readings, I did what you said to do. <laughs> Pretty much, hey, you, t <laughs> you tell me, you need to go ahead and take a massage the day before so you're not all tensed up. I did what you said to do, and it worked. Yeah. It worked for me. Yeah. So you go in and you take the exam, and then you've got the fairly long wait for results, uh, which you've been through before, so you know what that process is like. But talk us through what it was like when results came out uh, for the exam. Well... I had to wait until I got my UBE transcript to see mm -hmm. what the score was to, to mm -hmm. really determine yep. if I had passed this exam or not. Yeah. And um, this is like this is my happy space now when it comes to law. So I saw that had come in on my phone. I was here by myself. The girls were off to school. Richard was off to work. And I came in my room and I told myself, no matter what happens, I'm going to be all right with this. And I, I said, no matter what happens, I'm still going to get there. So I had already reserved myself, no matter what's happening, I'm still going to be an attorney at law. And mm -hmm. I said, all I need to see is a 260 something, 260 mm -hmm. something, and I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And I pressed the button, click, 268. So. Wait, just stop here. <laughs> that, that number again was what? 268. 268. And let me just say, because I know you've done this, how many states could you uh, get into with a 268? 15 states. 15 states. <laughs> Folks, I want you to know that you're looking at somebody who went from not passing the bar and not getting into any states to someone who could be licensed in 15 states with one score. Wow. And that's a jump. I mean, that is, that is one whale of a jump. And I mean... Just uh, we, we said here in the office, we were gobsmacked, um, you know, not because we didn't expect you to pass, but that big a jump was huge. What did it feel like in that moment? I mean, you're sitting in your, your, your office, you see that number. What's the emotion? I was elated. I was relieved. I felt that what I put in, I was getting back, mm -hmm. and I felt that I had fought the good fight and finally yeah. won. Um, it was, it was, it's been a long road. Yeah, yeah. 
and this is why now, we wanted I'm at, this is, I'm at a this, good part of the road now <laughs> yeah you are for sure this is some really a big part of why we wanted to ask you to share your story and i know it's not always easy to share when there have been hardships but i know that there are people watching right now who are crying i i guarantee it cindy that there are people who are going oh my god that's my story that's my life what would you say to those people who are feeling that they're down in the, the depths, you know, they're in despair, they haven't passed, they've gotten their results and they weren't what they were hoping for, and it feels pretty bleak to them? I would say, don't stop. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Persevere. Push past through whatever you have put in your mind, and that celebration help you to Get over the hump. And I would say, fight till you get it right. Yeah. And you fought. I mean, you know, I, I want to be really clear with our audience. Cindy didn't just passively sit back and say, sure, whatever. You fought. You fought hard. You asked me hard questions. You pushed back when I told you I didn't like certain things. Um, you engaged in the, the whole process, but you also did everything we asked you to do. And, and in a way that makes you a perfect student because you were willing to acknowledge that you had to change, right? You had to do something different. And you were trying to find that thing that would work and you were willing to really uh, throw yourself wholeheartedly into that, right? Um, I remember one conversation we had about your daughter. She was a cheerleader, right? Yes, Lacey yes. is a cheerleader, as I used to be, so I'm, right. I'm real proud of her for that. And, and I, I, I know I asked you this, and I don't remember the name, but the person that gets thrown up in the air, they called a flyer? They are the flyers, yes. Right, and, and Lacey is a flyer? Lacey is one of the flyers, yes. Okay, so when you're, when you're a flyer, you got to trust that somebody's going to catch you on the way down, right? you got to do it right the, way, the right way. And we talked a lot about that analogy as kind of what you had to be going through, right? You were giving up control in a sense, but you were also trusting that you were gonna be okay, that somebody would catch you. And for you, a big part of that was your faith. It, it's your understanding of, of, of the universe and God and why you were being called to do all of this. And then believing that we came into your life for a reason. And I, I wanna make that point because I think sometimes people lose sight of the fact that you don't have to believe in the same God that I believe in, but there aren't coincidences. I mean, things happen for reasons. And uh, the ability to have someone that you trust who's telling you, look, if you'll do it this way, if you'll try it this way, it'll work, is enormously important, I think, right? You have to surrender to the process. Yeah, yeah. You have to surrender to the process. Once I surrender to the process, I would get answers right and didn't know why I got them right. But you know what? I knew it. It was in there. You, yeah. you have to really trust in the people you ask to help you. Right. Uh, the other thing is celebration. They also have you set up um, accountability people in your life. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. My brother, Kevin, was my accountability person. So they would, yeah. would call me, check in on me. And... You know, I trust him. I, you know, I know that he's like, hey, do what they're telling you to do. And you also set up um, the group coaching calls. Mm -hmm. That was tremendous help to me. I go to church on Sunday, and then then after that, I would have my group coaching call with Kelly. And Kelly from your team is wonderful. She, she you know, she she just knew how to bring us all together, and it helped me refocus for the next week. She said, hey, so what's your goal for for next week? And you had all these other people going through the same process as you. And some of them were retakers, so they were like, okay, this is where I'm at on, on the outline. This is where I'm going. I mean, what else do you need but someone to tell you, this is where I'm at, this is where I'm going. And that helped me because it helped me yeah. from point A to point B. And yeah. now I'm, I'm at the point I wanna be at. Right, right. And, I, and I'm hopeful that you'll continue to be part of our community and supportive because I know that's just who you are um, and, and doing all that. So your, your goal, your, your step now is you're going to uh, become a member of the D.C. Bar at least, right? Definitely. That is, that is my first uh, choice. Right, right. Uh, but just, I'm, just so uh, you folks know, she could also be a member of the Illinois Bar, the New York Bar, the New Jersey Bar. Uh, that's got to make you feel pretty darn special. It? It, does. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it humbles me though because yeah. I know how 
hard it was to get here yeah. and how many people in my family were, you know, every February, every February in July, I know people in my family were thinking, hmm, you know, is this the bar? Is yeah. this the one? So, yes. Got to be exciting in your family when they got the news. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, big African-American family from Louisiana. So you can just imagine uh, the phone calls that I had to put out, call my sister Kay, call my brothers, call, you know, all my aunts. You know, you have to call everybody in Louisiana. You just can't pick one phone call. <laughs> no, I got that. And then there's got to be a lot of food. Uh, that's the other thing. Well, oh, gotta be able to... I can't get to the food right now, but I'm sure they're having a celebration. For you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, Cindy, I, I just want to say on behalf of our family, congratulations. We are enormously proud of you. This is an extraordinary accomplishment. And I think that it really speaks to the not only the person you are, but the kind of lawyer you're going to be. You know, I've said this often in these interviews that the people who persevere are the people that I would like to have representing me if I needed a lawyer, because I know that that's the kind of person that just is going to do their very best. They're not going to give up. They're going to, to really uh, give it everything that they've got. And that's you. And that's obvious. I think everybody in our audience today can see that. Uh, I have no doubt that you will be a very successful member of the bar in whatever way that you choose to use your bar membership. And you have such a range of options open to you now that um, it's very exciting. I mean, there was a time when, you know, you pass one bar and that's all you get. Uh, today, it's, it's different. And so your score is a, uh, a reward, in a sense, for having waited and gone through all this. You now get the, the bountiful blessings, right, of this incredible portfolio of, of states open to you. So you can do a lot of things. And... Um, I really look forward to seeing how that goes and what you do. I know we're going to hear from you again in lots of uh, extraordinary ways. And I know that, that along with your family and your friends, everyone who's watching is probably thinking, oh my gosh, th what a story, what a lady, uh, what a member of the bar. So I, I would echo all of those thoughts uh, and just uh, thank you. Any, any final comments that you want to share with our audience before we, I've taken up too much of your time here, but you're, it's just too good a story. I would say for all those people that are considering this as a second career, it's never too late to go back, and it's never too late to get to your dreams. And for all those people that you know come from backgrounds that maybe they don't have attorneys, I am the first uh, attorney in my family, uh, African American female with a family, with another career, uh, with a husband. You can do this. It ain't gonna be easy. Get the right people that you need. Celebration, bar review, they can help you. But it can happen because it happened for me. Awesome. Cindy, thank you so much. It's really been fun catching up with you and uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future. And to everybody in the audience, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I have. We'll see you again next time uh, when we hang out with another successful bar exam taker. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>